Hey there, tech enthusiasts, open source aficionados, and security experts. Glad to see you. Today we're exploring the question why you should consider using Debian Linux in 2025. Now, despite the fact that Debian and I go way back, this isn't just an opinion piece, maybe a little bit. It's backed by my experience as a long time on and off Linux user and someone who's been knee deep in virtualization, containerization, AI, and security. Let's get into it. It's been a while since I've been a regular Debian user. Now, many of you may know me from tech conferences, maybe public speaking gigs that I've done, or maybe as part of my time in the Microsoft MVP program, but here's something not everybody knows. I was a Linux admin in a past life. Over the years, I've kept a foot in the open source world, sure, using Linux for personal projects, and more recently for various content projects for my day job in the security space, stuff like hosting pen testing tools like Evilgenics. If any of you are interested in that particular topic, I'll put the link to the, a webinar I did on that subject down in the video description. Now, a combination of personal project needs brought me back as a regular full-time Debian user. Things like running virtualization platforms, KVM, kernel virtual machine, AI and custom LLM workloads via applications like Olama, building secure lab environments for security testing, and experimenting with containers in all their forms, Docker, Container D, Kubernetes, etc. Plus, if I'm honest, I'm looking to return to contributing to the open source community, and there's no better place to do it than Debian's rich and active open source community. So let me break down why Debian is a rock solid choice in 2025. That's why you're here, right? It's easy to dismiss Debian as old, especially when newer distributions like Ubuntu or Mint are so popular. But here is why Debian deserves your attention. So first, Debian Linux provides an obscene level of stability. If you need an OS that's dependable and virtually bug-free, Debian Stable is where it's at. It is a tank for stability. Next item, Debian is highly customizable with a vast repository and .deb package support. You can pretty much tailor it to any workload. Uh, it also receives regular updates from the mainline Linux kernel and applications within Debian stable repositories that really it makes it a fantastic choice for secure systems. And this is not to mention that the Debian community is robust and incredibly helpful. Trust me, they've got your back. When it comes to hardware, whether you're running new or old gear, Debian supports a vast area of different hardware types and ensures compatibility with long-term support that keeps your systems reliable. And then we also have the fact that Debian server-side performance is also a winner and its freedom from licensing restrictions makes it a dream for anyone concerned about vendor lock-in, which is a big issue in the industry today. And then. An honorable mention here is the apt, APT, the apt package manager from Debian. It's robust, powerful, and easy to use. It's a great utility for installing software and keeping everything up to date. Now, on top of everything I've already mentioned, I wanna spend some time talking about the flexibility that Debian offers through its branches. We have stable, testing, and unstable, also known as SID. So fun fact, Debian releases are named after Toy Story characters. For example, the current stable release as of this recording is Bookworm. The current testing branch is codenamed Trixie. And yes, Sid, the unstable branch, is named after the toy-breaking neighbor kid from the very first Toy Story. Now to break it down, first we have Debian Stable, the crown jewel for production environments. Like I said, this is your rock solid, like a tank, virtually bug-free uh, distribution, and it moves at a sale, snail's pace sometimes, but that's for good reason. It prioritizes reliability and security above all else. If you need a system that just works and never breaks, Debian Stable is where you wanna be. Next, we have Debian Testing which is the middle ground between stability and that cutting edge unstable software branch. Testing gets new features faster than stable, making it ideal for environments where you need more recent software, but still value some reliability. However, there's a catch. Security updates can lag behind a little bit due to the way that packages transition between the various branches. Finally, we have Debian Unstable, again, SID. 
this is where the magic of active development happens. Again, named after the infamous Toy Destroyer from Toy Story, Sid offers the latest packages and arguably some of the fastest security updates due to security concerns being addressed specifically by each package maintainer. However, this comes at a cost of being, well, a little unpredictable at times, right? It's perfect for developers, it's perfect for testers, or anyone like me who needs bleeding edge software for lab work and experimentation. It's quick updates and active development align perfectly with my particular use case and the reasons behind this video, but for most users, eh, stable and maybe to a lesser degree, testing is probably where you wanna be. So that all said, whether you're building a production environment, tinkering with the latest features, or diving headfirst into development, Debian's branches give you that flexibility to choose what works best for you. One last note I'm gonna end with here on why you should be considering Linux and Debian Linux in 2025, is if you're someone like me who's looking to contribute more to the open source community, you'd be hard pressed to find a more active and welcoming community than the Debian community. Are there some gatekeepers? Sure, you're gonna run into that in any community, but overall, Debian, that community really feels like the right place to join a diverse and fun ecosystem if you're looking to participate more in the open source community. So that's my journey back to Debian and why I think it's a phenomenal choice for tech professionals, security experts, and open source enthusiasts in 2025. Or even if you fall outside of one of those categories, it's a fantastic OS, but what about you? What projects could you see yourself using Debian for? Any concerns that would prevent you from trying it? I'm interested in your thoughts. Uh, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to, I'm gonna say it, smash that like and subscribe button. Stay tuned for more content on this in the future. Until next time, happy app getting? I don't know if that works. Have a good one, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.